Hello everyone, this is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. In this training tutorial, I will demonstrate how to use our simplified step-by-step -step wizard process flow for a multiple implant case. We have existing tutorials that shows the streamlined process for a one implant case, but in this tutorial, I will demonstrate a multiple implant case. I will also mention some less known tips and tricks during the process. And I will conclude the tutorial by demonstrating how to create this type of setup, both for patient case acceptance, patient education, and of course, clinically to help confirm the proper implant placement and the surgical guide design. For this tutorial, I am using version 413.35 of the Blue Sky Plan software. If you're not using this version, or if you're not sure if you have the latest version, simply go to help check for updates, the software will let you know. And if you're not using the latest version, you'll be prompted to download and install the newest version that we have. And the final point before we get started, please check out bluesky.bio.digital forward slash free offers. We have information here about a free surgical guide and free crowns for Blue Sky Bio customers that includes the design and manufacturing of the surgical guides and the crown for your single implant cases. So go ahead and check out the website for more information. We are going to start the wizard flow by going to implant and surgical guides, selecting one or two implant case. The software is confirming the data set that will be imported. We strongly recommend the use of a model STL or an intra oral scan and the surgical guide kit that will be used. We strongly recommend the use of the Blue Sky Bio fully guided surgical kit. If for whatever reason you're not using the Blue Sky Bio implants and the kit, you could left click and select from a long list of other surgical kits for other implant companies. So make the relevant correct selection and then choose OK. The software is now prompting us to load the relevant CT DICOM data for the case. We have the shortcut buttons going across the top of the screen here that could be used to quickly navigate to relevant locations or you can navigate via the folder structure on your computer, select the relevant CT DICOM data set. Blue Sky Plan can load compressed, uncompressed, zipped, unzipped DICOM images. We load everything, select the relevant set, and click the OK button. We are now, be prom we are now being prompted to select the relevant field of view. You could do so simply by grabbing and dragging with your left mouse button any of the yellow border frames, dragging them inwards to define the relevant field of view. By reducing the field of view, we're actually maximizing the relevant data within the future views. And depending on your computer, you'll be reducing, and you'll be reducing the processing power your computer needs by loading a portion of the data set. So everybody, depending on their computer, could decide how much they want to be loading. But of course, make sure to include all relevant data that you will like in the case for planning purposes. Once you've done so, click the OK button. The software has now run completely automatic nerve detection. We can see the nerves in the 2D views and in the 3D views. Generally, the way that this wizard process flow works is that the software will automatically run the relevant process, show it to the user to confirm and modify if needed, and then the user could click next to move on. So in our situation, we could confirm the nerve detection. If needed, we could grab and drag with our left mouse button any of the nodes in any of the views. We could go through our vertical slices with the vertical indicator in the 3D view and the multicolor lines in that panoramic view, indicating the location of the vertical slices that we're looking at in the top left. Okay, just a word about mouse control Throughout the software, we could use our left mouse button to grab and rotate any surface in the 3D view. We could use our right mouse button to hold that down, move the mouse backwards or forwards to zoom in and to zoom out. And we could hold down the wheel of the mouse as if it's a button to just grab and move the objects in the 3D surface. We have similar functionality in the 2D views as well. Wherever we left click, that location will become active and our other views will update accordingly, showing us that particular location. If we use our right mouse button, hold it down and move the mouse backwards and forwards, we're zooming in and zooming out. And if we hold down the wheel of the mouse, 
we could grab and drag and move the slice around. If we scroll the mouse, then we could go through the relevant slices using the wheel of the mouse. Once we are satisfied with the nerve detection, we're going to go ahead and click on Next. The software is now prompting us to select an import to the relevant model or intraoral scan. Once again, we have the shortcut buttons on the top and you can navigate using the folder structure to the relevant model. Once you have it, left click to select and then go ahead and click on the OK button. The software is confirming jaw type, select the relevant jaw, and then click on OK. The software is now running completely automatic model to CT alignment. So we can see the model has been aligned to the CT in the 3D view. It's very important to confirm proper model to CT alignment, so we could confirm it in the 3D view, and then we can confirm it in our relevant 2D views. So we could see the outline of the yellow model in our various 2D views. If we start with our axial view, then we would like to see, especially as we approach the occlusion, that the model outline here in yellow is wrapped very tightly around the teeth. So we could use the wheel of the mouse to flip through the relevant slices. We could also use the slider to the right of the view as well. The same in our vertical slices, we could use the wheel of the mouse to go around the arch confirming alignment, or we could use the slider to the right as well. Once we've confirmed proper alignment, go ahead and click on next. So we have introduced automatic tooth or teeth design to the software. We have our previous teeth catalog that's available from this tab right here, and then the drop down of various sets of teeth but we recommend the use of the automatically created teeth, particular for your particular data set. So we're gonna select the location of one of the missing teeth. We're gonna go down and confirm and select the relevant implant selection. Again, we very much highly recommend the use of the Blue Sky Bio implants and our fully guided surgical kit, which allows you to take advantage of the free surgical guide and free crown offer, as we mentioned earlier. But if you are using a different system, you could click the implant system list and select the relevant company to see the relevant implants. Once you have the relevant implant selected, and you will have the option of changing the implant size later on, so don't worry about that, simply go ahead and click on the OK button. Click OK again. Left click once in the area where the tooth should be generated, and the software will automatically generate a tooth based on your particular data set. So we could see here that the software has generated a tooth, has placed the implant as well. Now we're going to repeat the process for the additional missing tooth. So we're once again going to click position crowns. The software asks us if we want to remove what we did and replace it with a new one, or we, or we want to keep existing and add new, which is what we're going to click now. Now we're going to select the additional tooth, confirm the implant size or click to change, click OK, and left click once in the area of the missing tooth. Okay, so now we have both of our teeth generated and we have our implants positioned. We're going to click on next. And here we're able to confirm the implant placement both in the 3D view and in the 2D view. So you could left click to activate a particular implant. We could see that the widget appears around the implant in the 3D view. We could use any of the controllers in the widget to grab and drag or rotate the implant. We could also activate the widget in the 2D view that allows us to tilt and rotate. We could use the slider to the right of the view to rotate around the implant. We could also use the wheel of our mouse just to scroll through the relevant slices. Once we've confirmed the implant placement for one implant, we could click on the second implant. We could toggle back and forth as needed, and we could, and we could tweak the implant placement as needed as well. Here we have the option of changing the implant size if we deem that to be necessary. Simply click, simply right click on the implant, choose replace, 
select the updated implant size, and then click OK. Once we've confirmed the implant placement, simply click Next. The software will now automatically draw the surgical guide curve. The surgical guide curve defines the area on which the surgical guide will be generated. We have in preferences the ability to change the definition of the number of teeth on each side of the osteotomy and other situations in terms of the surgical guide curve being drawn automatically. You can also on screen just grab and drag any node as you like to change or modify the surgical guide curve. Once you have done so and confirmed the curve, simply click on next. The software is now fabricating the surgical guide. We can now see on screen the surgical guide. We could see that the vertical axis of each implant goes through the middle of the surgical guide. And while the brown software guide tubes indicate that there's interference on the inner diameter of each one of the holes in the surgical guide, the surgical guide itself actually takes that into consideration, we'll see in just a minute, and it removes the overlapping interfering parts of each one of the software guide tubes in the adjacent osteotomy area. For now, I'm going to click on Next. I'll now define the location of where the relevant project file and STL surgical guide should be saved. So for now, I'll go to my desktop, click New Folder, call this Demo Export, and then click OK. The software is asking if we want to complete the case approval form before sending. If you're going to be sending the case to somebody or to a lab and you would like, you could click Yes and just approve the plan and approve the surgical guide. This is optional and not mandatory. You do have the option of printing it and saving. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. The software now offers the option of having the surgical guide that you just designed manufactured. So if you're not going to be printing in-house and you would like to order the surgical guide, you could do so directly from the prescription form here. The price is $49 plus $29 per implant. So if you're not going to be printing in-house, this is a fantastic alternative option. The surgical guide will be manufactured and sent to you. You could go ahead and click on close or exit out if this isn't relevant. And finally, the software is asking where the PDF drilling report should be saved. So if you like, you could select the same folder as previously, click OK. The drilling report will be saved to the relevant location and will open on screen as well. And clicking Next, we'll open the Blue Sky Bio website and we'll add the relevant parts to the shopping cart. So we'll automatically select the relevant metal cylinder. We have the fully guided keyless kit. If you haven't ordered that yet, you could order it now, or if you already own it, click the red X to remove it, and the relevant implants. So you could check out and have the relevant metal cylinders and the relevant implants sent directly to you to complete your case. The software is now asking you if you want to start a new case or close the wizard. So I'm going to demonstrate how we could go ahead and segment the teeth and the jaws as we saw at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to click close the wizard. And then I'm going to switch up here to model master. This is taking us to the model master module. So here we have the option to take advantage of different features and functionalities. I'm going to go over to the panels option and choose segmentation. If we look at the segmentation panel section right here, we have option to segment the maxilla, the mandible, and the option of don't merge teeth and jaw models. We're going to select the three different options. Airways is an option as well if you've imported the relevant section of the CT scan. For now, I'll leave that unchecked. And now I'm going to click once to start the automatic segmentation. Now this is going to run completely on its own. 
we're going to see that the software segments each tooth from the CT scan as well as the relevant jaws. This does run completely automatically. It does take a minute or two to run as it's actually going around the arch and segmenting every tooth and the relevant jaws. So you can let it run. We could see that it's generating a different STL file for each tooth. And once the segmentation process is done, we could double click on the surface. It opens up our surfaces panel. Let's hide the CT scan. And here we have all of our teeth and each of the jaws segmented separately. So we could use the visible checkbox for any surface that we have here to show where to hide it. We could go to our maxilla model and change the transparency. We could do the same with our mandible model. We could do the same if we like with our initial import the model. And now we have a tool here. Let's go ahead and maximize this by clicking the top right button to the view where we could use number one for patient case acceptance, number two for patient education and explaining, and of course, clinically, to verify and confirm the implant placement and the design of the surgical guide. And just to mention what I spoke about earlier, while we saw the brown software guide tubes were interfering with the osteotomy for the adjacent implants, when we hide the software guide tubes and we look just at the surgical guide, we could see that there's no interference and a metal cylinder could be inserted if necessary. And the metal cylinder can be inserted with no issues. We hear that the software has automatically created windows adjacent to the osteotomy, both for visibility to confirm that the surgical guide is seating completely and also to make sure there's no interference for the handpiece when creating the osteotomies.